what's up it's Casey and today I just wanted to kind of give you an update as to what has been going on in my life um I know I sort of mentioned back in my November favorites why I hadn't done an October favorites and why there weren't a lot of beauty favorites in my November favorites um I'll link that video down below for you but I just kind of wanted to let you know really what exactly is happening in my life um <clears throat> so let's rewind back to like the middle of September I started to get a really serious headache um and I felt like I was popping ibuprofen every single day like not like one or two I'm talking like a lot of ibuprofen every day and then um on the 8th of October I was driving to work and I was sitting at the red light right next to my work and I passed out in my car and I was on the phone with my husband and when I came you know I came to really quick but it was just like oh my gosh I just passed out like I'm driving you know and that is a really really scary thing because when you pass out you know you just <sighs> I don't know it's really scary when you're driving and you pass out and all of a sudden you're like you wake up and you're creeping out into the middle of an intersection when you've got a red light and um so I went to work and I was like you know I was shaken a little bit but I made it through the day my head slowly started to hurt worse and worse and worse um the next morning I got up my head was hurting um, but I was like, you know, I'll be fine. No big deal. So I got Matthew ready for school. I started getting ready for work. I went to the bathroom. I got up, was brushing my teeth, turned around, passed out. I smacked my forehead on the bathroom door. Um, and I was like, you know, I'll be okay. No big deal. I called my husband. I let him know. Went ahead and took Matthew to school, drove to work. Um, when I got to work, all of a sudden, I couldn't feel the left side of my face, and I just got totally panicked. And so, I called Jason and was like, hey, I'm freaking out. I don't know what to do. Um, I'm keeping you on standby, you know, just because I just don't know what's going on. I was talking to one of my supervisors, and I was, you know, letting her know what was going on, and she said, you know, you need to go home. Well, at this point, I was petrified of driving. I've already passed out. I can't feel my face. I'm freaking out. So I call Jason, and Jason comes to get me, and he takes me to the doctor. And the doctor was like, you know, they did neurological exams. They did an EKG to make sure it wasn't my heart. So they did all these exams just to try to make sure, you know, try to rule out anything incredibly serious. Try to rule out seizures. Try to rule out, um, you know, stuff like that. So... Um, he told me that I had Bell's palsy, which is what was going on with the left side of my face, and they didn't know what the fainting was, but, um, they were hoping that it would, that it was a virus. That's what I was told. So, um, they sent me home with medication to help with the Bell's palsy. And, um, so I went home, the Bell's palsy slowly got worse. It got to the point where th I couldn't, I couldn't barely talk. I could barely eat. Um, I couldn't smile. I don't know if you can still see it. There's times where this side of my face is still slower than the other side of my face. Um, I couldn't close this eye. I, um, you know, was having a lot of issues and I called them back and I said, you know, called, this was on a Friday. I called them on Monday. I said, I'm still fainting regularly. Um, what do I do? So they set me up with an MRI. I went and I had the MRI and it came back and it showed spots on my frontal lobe. And so they set me up an appointment with a neurologist and, uh, this whole time, they're like, you're not allowed to drive. Um, you shouldn't be alone very often just because of your safety. We're worried about your safety. Um, you know, you can't work. Um, all of these things, you know, and it's really scary. So, um, 
I go to the neurologist and the by this point it's two weeks in so two weeks I haven't driven I haven't worked I've barely been alone um, and so we go to the neurologist and the neurologist is like it's nothing I don't think you really had Bell's palsy um, I don't think that you're really passing out um, I don't think it's really any big deal um, I think you're fine I'm gonna treat you like it's a migraine but I really don't think there's anything wrong with you and by this point you know I'm passing out five to ten times a day I'm not talking about I'm passing out once a day I'm talking I'm passing out five to ten times a day and if you would ask me if my pain level what my pain level was on a scale of one to ten I would tell you it was a twelve and I don't do that I am the kind of person who would tell you oh it's a five it's not a big deal you know and I would tell you it was a 12 so it was huge for me I left very defeated um the doctor that I had been going to that I'd been going to for years and years basically wrote me off this neurologist basically wrote me off and I was like you know there's something wrong and I need to figure out what it is so I found a new um, a new doctor, a new primary care doctor, and I went to them and they were like, you know, we're going to figure this out. It's going to be fine. Um, about a week later, I woke up and my blood sugar was through the roof and I was still passing out. Um, the neurologist had said they would schedule me an EEG. They still hadn't called. They still hadn't scheduled it. Um, so I, my mom calls me and she said, you know what, I'm on my way home. I'm coming to get you. I'm leaving work. I'm coming to get you. We're going to the hospital. We're not doing this. Um, she said, you're not going to put your life on hold. They had told me to take another two weeks off of work to get this EEG done and it wasn't happening. And she was like, you're not putting your life on hold and you're sick and it's not fair. And so she took me to the hospital and I spent three nights in the hospital and, um, you know, they didn't, they did um, another MRI of my brain with contrast this time, and there were bright spots on my brain, on my frontal lobe. Um, they did an EEG, which didn't show any clear cut seizures. Um, they did an EKG, which didn't show any heart issues, that, but they kept me on a heart monitor the entire time. Um, they kept me severely severely medicated. I slept basically, if I wasn't in some kind of test, I was asleep um, or screaming in pain. By the time I left, they had got my pain level down to a three, which was incredible. Um, within a week of leaving the hospital, my pain level was back up. I can't live on constant pain medication. I can't live sleeping all day. Um, I was told, you know, you need to sleep, you need to get plenty of rest, it's very important for you to sleep, it's important for you to get a full night's sleep, it's important for you to take naps, it's very important for you to rest, 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 rest. Um, so throughout this entire time I missed a month of work and during missing a month of work, you know, um, my husband and I talked a lot about, is it worth going back? Um, Especially being told, you know, you need all this sleep, you need all this rest, you need to de-stress, you need to relax a lot. And so we talked a lot and situations here and situations at work had changed. And so when I went back, it was basically, you know, I just need to leave. And so work and I we came to a mutual agreement I worked a few more days just to help them out and I left my job and it was not an easy decision for me and it's still not an easy decision for me I sorry I love my kids there I love my kids very much and um, leaving them really devastated me and broke my heart and it was really hard for me and I hope
that they know and I hope that their parents know and I hope that everybody understands that I didn't leave because I didn't like the job or because of anything to do with the kids. The kids are what held me there constantly. Um, every time that I felt sick, they're what kept me from leaving. Um, you know, I've had deteriorating health for a long time and they are what has kept me there. And um, the entire month that I was gone, those kids constantly were in my head like, I'm leaving my kids, I'm not there, what, what are my kids doing, how are my kids, That they just mean so much to me and I'm really sad not having them in my life every day and it's hard for me. Um, making the decision to leave was really difficult for me but I had to come to a realization that I have a child, a child that I gave birth to that I need to put as a priority. I need to put my health as a priority. I need to put my husband as a priority. My family as a priority to me. This is what I felt like God was telling me to do. And so this is what I did. And I think about those kids a lot. And do I regret this decision to leave? No, I don't. But was it a hard decision for me? And is it still something that I think about? Of course, absolutely. Um, but so I left my job and, um, my health, I quit my job the week of Thanksgiving. I worked my last day that Wednesday. Um, so, you know, it's been two or three weeks of no working. Um, I decided to sell premier jewelry. That's something that my mom does and it was something that I felt was a good fit for me and you know we prayed a lot on it and we discussed it a lot and it was not a quick decision <laughs> um seriously every video it wasn't a quick decision but it was something that we felt was right for us and a good fit and so that's what we decided um but as far as my health it's still fighting with doctors and trying to get seen by doctors and um, you know trying to find the right medications. What I was told when I left the hospital was it was either migraines or multiple sclerosis and um, I have a really hard time saying that so I always have to stop and slow down and say it. Um, so they basically told me that they couldn't diagnose it as MS until six months later. They're going to do another MRI of my brain. Um, and so they're treating it as migraines now. Has the medication helped? No. Um, pain level. I'm constantly at least at an 8. There are days where I'm at a 9, 10, 11, 12. Um, <laughs> you know, but it's never less than an eight. Um, you know, I am, people think that I quit my job so that I could stay at home and be lazy. I, I didn't. I stay home. I work hard, um, to take care of my family, to be there for my family, to clean a home every day. I run two businesses. I have a YouTube business. I have a premier jewelry business. Um, do I take naps every day? Of course I do. I do. Is that my choice? Absolutely not. Ask my husband when he asks me, have you taken a nap today? And I get really agitated because I don't want to. It's not a choice that I make. I don't choose to stay home so that I can go to sleep every day. Um, I feel like it's a waste of my time. There's a lot more things that I could get done in that two hours. But if I don't, by the time my husband gets home at night, I'm useless. I am absolutely useless. Um, I have new issues, new symptoms. Um, I'm slowly getting worse. I'm not getting better. Um, the neurologist that we saw in the hospital was much better than the one that we saw um, before. 
Dr. Quacky is what I call that guy. The one in the hospital was fantastic. I can't see him for um, financial reasons. I can't see him. So we're trying to get into another neurologist, um, which is taking time, and I can't see them until the middle of February. It's just a really long process. So the thing is, is I may not always have a video up when I intend to have a video up. I understand that it may seem crazy because I stay at home all day, every day. Please understand. Um, I try to film as many videos ahead as I can. I can only sit at a computer and edit so long. I can only sit in a chair and film so long. I can only talk so long before words start jumbling in my head, before my speech starts slurring. Um, I have days where I get up and I can't function. Um, I have days where I get up and I function so long and then my body crashes and shuts down and it's done. And so I do my best to put out videos that I can put out. Um, I try my hardest. Um, Holiday Gift Guide Part 3 was something that I was really excited about because it was supposed to be for kids and pets and things like that. It's not going to happen. Am I disappointed? Absolutely. Am I disappointed that I told you guys it was going to happen and it's not going to happen? Absolutely. Do I feel like I didn't keep my word? For sure. Can I help it? No. Um, Sunday we went to Sunday school, which is since I got sick in September, I've only been to Sunday school twice. Sunday was one of those times. Um, I have not been to... No. Um, I have not been to actual church service in almost three months, um, but I went to Sunday school when I got out, <coughs> when I got out of Sunday school, I was physically shaking and I had what my grandmother thinks was a seizure. Holiday gift guide three didn't happen. Um, I really apologize. I want to keep my word and I'm doing my best to keep my word so when I can film I sit down and I film I really apologize and I hope that you guys can totally understand um, where I'm coming from I try not to delve too much into medical terms and personal terms and I'm really sorry about the dog barking in the background there's dogs running around my neighborhood and he's going crazy um, I really I'm not telling Coop stop I'm not telling you any of this because I want your sympathy or I want you to feel bad for me. And that's not at all what this is. I'm telling you because I want you to understand just where I'm coming from. I'm doing my best um, to do what I tell you I'm going to do. I will try to stop telling you that I'm going to put certain things out. Um, but I do get excited about videos that I have planned. Um, so I hope that you guys can understand. Um, you know, and I hope... I also hope that Toby, I also hope that you know that if you have medical issues, you're not the only one out there. Um, I have them. I don't want people to ever feel like they're alone. So if you feel like you're alone in your medical issues, please don't reach out to me. I would love to talk to you and help you understand that you're not the only one. Um, if you feel like doctors don't understand you, you're not the only one. If you feel like people think that you're faking it, you're not the only one. I feel that way too. Don't worry. People think I'm faking it. And that's okay. And it's not important. What's important is that you understand your body and that you fight for yourself and that you fight for your body and you fight for your rights. So I just want you to know that you are not alone. If you're sick, you're not alone. Um, I'm there with you. And um, I'm in your team and I'm in your corner. And, um, I hope that you guys totally understand where I'm coming from in this video. And I just wanted to give you an update on where I am. And I'm already starting to trip over my own words, so I better just end this video now. Um, I hope that you guys have a happy holidays. There will hopefully be a couple of videos up between now and Christmas. And then I do plan on having a, um, um, if I can think of the right word, there goes my brain shutting down. I plan on having a what I got for Christmas haul and then of course at the beginning of January 
there will also be a 2015 favorites video so I hope that you guys stay tuned and subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you guys next time bye guys